I just hit the people up who would express interest through my email list. That's how I raised over $200,000 to make what I believe will be one of the funniest movies of 2020. In this video, I'm going to try to explain to you how most of us are wasting our time and our earning potential because of our huge misunderstanding of social media. What up, Romney Malco in the building. Welcome to The Pep. This is the place where growth-oriented people gather to discuss personal and professional development. That, 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 that wasn't dramatic enough, huh? Then let me try one more time. What up, everybody? My name is Romney Malco, and welcome to another episode of Advice from a Jackass. Yes, there are billions of people on social media, but it reminds me of the old adage of just build it and they will come. No, they won't. No, no, no. That's a huge misconception. And that's how you continue to pour your time and energy into this machine, creating content for these platforms that add up. Remove the connection between you and the audience that you spent hours, years, maybe even a decade building. Speaking of building, please stick around to the end of this video. I've got a six month giveaway that you cannot afford to miss. Growing up in poor communities, I saw a lot of people who were desperate for money. But I also saw people who were extremely desperate for attention. And what was crazy is when they came into money, they often blew all that money on things that they thought would get them attention. Ironically, I'm seeing the exact same thing on social media. People are busting their behinds and breaking their necks to get attention on social media with no ROI, return on investment whatsoever. I'd be like, well, what are you doing it for? And they'll be like, to get more followers. And I'd be like, well, why do you need more followers? And they'll be like, Don't get me wrong, there are branding deals to be had, there are products to be marketed, I understand that. But some of us are doing it for no other reason other than the fact that we have an addiction to attention and immediate gratification. Or just feeling obligated due to FOMO. It's like the guy who came up to me and said, yo, what up, Romney? My name is so-and-so. I worked with you on that job Las Vegas with Kevin Klein, Robert De Niro, and Morgan Freeman. And I was like, okay, did we talk? He goes, no, nah, no, nah, we didn't get to talk, man, because they had me in the bleachers. I was an extra. Truth number one, that is exactly what it is like on social media media, especially platforms like Facebook. For instance, on Facebook, we are just extras in the bleachers. And since we keeping it 1000 a day, Facebook and Instagram are not just social media platforms. They are advertisement platforms, great advertisement platforms. And the sooner you recognize that, the sooner you can use it to your advantage. Where else can you run a laser targeted ad for $2 a day and generate quality leads? If you don't know what a lead is, please raise your hand. Y'all need to wear deodorant, fam. Yes, there are over 2 billion people on Facebook alone, but posting to the platform does not give you access to those people. If you want access, you have to pay for it. And I wish it were that simple. It's not just that we have to pay for it. We have to be strategic in the way that we pay for it. Here's a screenshot of how much money I blew on Facebook advertising just a few years ago because I failed to implement strategy. Back then, I truly believed that paying for access would be enough. Hence the title of this video series, Advice from a Jackass. Facebook advertising is pretty extensive and it can be quite complicated. My advice, hire someone to build you a targeted Facebook campaign. Also, target Facebook groups and other online forums that have have audiences who might be into what you have to offer. Market yourself to those forums. But if you insist on doing your Facebook advertising yourself, please do your research. There are some amazing digital marketers and social media gurus out there teaching on their YouTube channels, in their blogs, on their podcasts. I advise you to pay close attention to what they have to say, but also keep in mind, right, that they're only giving you some of the information because ultimately they want you to buy their online course or hire them for their services. So whether you hire someone or choose to do it yourself, you're still going to end up coming out of your pocket for something. Social media truth number two, know exactly who your audience is. You have to know them inside out. You got to know what they like. You got to know what they eat. You got to know who they've murdered. I went too far with that one. I'm sorry. Because until you know exactly who your audience is, you're not going to be able to effectively market to them. You're not going to be able to give them anything that they find of value. You know, it's not like you can just throw a big old net out there and just catch a bunch of minnows. It ain't that simple. Let's say you hire someone on Fiverr.com to make you some quality graphics and they give you back these masculine graphics with masculine fonts and masculine colors and your entire audience is made up of women. That's probably not going to fly well. It's probably not going to generate 
a whole lot of leads. You've got to know your audience avatar to a T so that you can say strategic things that strike a nerve with the exact players you are trying to reach. Everybody ain't going to be hype about your placenta recipe. It's like trying to sell a waist trainer to Dwayne The Rock Johnson. What I'm trying to say is quality content and smart advertising is how you grow an audience on social media today. However, you have to be extremely specific about who you are speaking to. Without that, you're not only wasting your time and energy by screaming from the bleachers, but you're also wasting your voice because you're putting out all of this content in front of people who could care less. Like I said, it is not free. There is very little organic traffic on these so-called social media platforms. Social media truth number three. Yes, it is important to come up with engagement-worthy content and meaningful captions, but look at each post as an incubation test. That's right. Observe which posts get a little bit more traction in others and focus your advertisement dollars there. Also, create more content that revolves around the topics that get you the most interest. For instance, I posted the following video to Facebook. 3,100 people have viewed it according to Facebook, but Facebook considers three seconds of view. Based on 280 comments, reactions, and shares, it's safe to say that maybe somewhere between 300 and 500 people actually engage the video beyond one or two minutes. Yet the video has 31 organic shares. That's damn near a 10% share ratio when 10% of the people who reacted to this video also went to my lead page. So based on the video's organic performance, I'm going to turn it into a very targeted ad to see if it can generate more shares and more leads. And if it continues to generate shares, I'm getting way more bang for my buck. And that is part of how I strategically generate leads. I then ask those people who sign up on my landing page to follow me on other social media platforms. They are the followers who will bring quality organic engagement to your social media posts. And that quality engagement gives your post virality. Now I know 3,100 views is pretty low for someone with over 400,000 Facebook followers, but that's the way that Facebook does it. I have a brand page, and as a result of that, if I want more outreach, I have to pay. On average, if you have a brand page or a Facebook page, your outreach is somewhere between 1.5 and 2%. And if you have a profile page, your reach is somewhere between 5 and 6%. But like I said, every post is an incubation test, and my focus is more so on the engagement rather than the amount of views. If only 20 people had seen my video, but 20% of those 20 people had taken the time to share my video, I'd still consider those very good numbers. That to me has the potential of being a very effective ad. For example, here's a video that I created for my crowdfunding campaign. 7.4 million views. Its organic reach was off the charts. I struck a nerve with the audience. The message was timely and the engagement was unbelievable. I made certain to respond to as many comments as possible. And that engagement would open up these channels of communication. We'd begin to build a rapport with one another and make maybe even trust. And at which point I could say, yo, would you mind swinging by my crowdfunding campaign and just checking out what I have there? And if you can't give anything, no biggie, maybe you can just share it to some of your friends. Thank you. And that leads me to social media truth number four. You need a landing page so that you can collect email addresses or phone numbers or whatever method of communication you want to maintain so that you can stay in direct contact with the people who are interested in what you have to offer. Like I said before, collect the email addresses or phone numbers of people and then ask them to follow you you on your social media platform. Most people are doing it the other way around. They're growing an apathetic audience who has absolutely no interest in anything that they have to offer. You know what else they're growing? Frustrated. They're showing up every single day to sit in the bleachers, shouting at the top of their lungs, hoping that the efforts will gain them some kind of recognition on the field. And the truth is, most likely it won't. So like I said, that video that I created for my crowdfunding campaign with 7.4 million views, it struck a nerve. And that video directed people to my landing page for my crowdfunding campaign. When I would comment and engage with them, I'd eventually direct them to my landing page. I didn't just outright say, hey, I'm selling something. Go check it out. You should be interested in it. No, no, no. I gave them quality content that they really connected with and wanted to engage me with, wanted to discuss further. And I used that as an opportunity to say, yo, would you be willing to check out my landing page? I got this crowdfunding campaign going on, yada, 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 yada. And you want to know what else is dope? When my crowdfunding campaign finally launched, I didn't have to spend all this money on cold leads on Facebook. I just hit the people up who would express interest through my email list. That's how I raised over $200,000 to make what I believe will be one of the funniest movies of 2020. It's called Prison Logic. It's written and directed by me. It stars me. It stars Regina Hall. It stars Tammy Roman. It stars Froggy Fresh Rap. It is funny.
money is held. And for those of you who want to see this independent film before everybody else or just be notified upon its release, please go to prisonlogic.com and join our early Hawks list. Look at that. Black man practicing what he preaches. That is prisonlogic.com. Hell, if this video ends up getting a lot of engagement and being shared a lot, I will probably boost it to a very specific audience to find more people who enjoy R-rated comedies with deep messages and show love for people like Regina Hall and myself. But one of the most important takeaways I want you to have about this whole thing is that if starting your own business or marketing your own product seems overwhelming, it's probably because you're thinking of it as having to convince random people from all over the world to consider your product or service. No, you're just shooting your shot and letting the people who are interested come to you. And those are the people you share your heart up, your art up, and your startup with. Those people on your mailing list are the same people that are going to click the notification button when they follow you on other platforms. They bring genuine engagement to your social media posts. And you know what else? I see so many people out there who are just buying fake followers. They are buying fake followers. They got like 25, 35,000, 100,000 followers. They got a million followers. And when they post something, it's got like nine likes. It's got like two comments. And if you go out there and generate an audience of people who don't really care about what you have to offer, it's the same thing as having fake followers because they become spectators. They're not engagers. Engagement is key. And when your post is getting quality, organic engagement out the gate, this giant computer robot called Facebook goes, yo, folks like this post, we need to share it on our popular pages to increase engagement. Of all of today's social media platforms have learned one thing from MySpace. It is to prioritize organic engagement above all else. If not, their platforms will become boring and users will mind great elsewhere. So if you want real engagement, build yourself a real audience and make direct connection the priority. Then encourage those people to follow you on other social media platforms. This is the long-term game. If you like this kind of content, I beg of you to follow me at peprequest.com. It enables me to notify you of important posts without having to rely on the algorithms of other social media platforms to do so. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, a recap of my four social media truths. Social media truth number one, a huge social media platform does not automatically equate to huge social media outreach for you. Yes, there might be a few billion people on Facebook, but you're going to pay out the ass to reach them. I promise you that. Social media truth number two, a crystal clear understanding of who your audience is, who you're speaking to, who you're trying to reach is imperative. If you're just casting your message out there into the ether, more than likely it's falling on deaf ears. Social media truth number three, look at every single post as an incubation test. That's one strategy for generating better posts, sales, and marketing pitches that will hit all the right pain points of your key audience. Social media truth number four, you need a fine-tuned landing page to collect email addresses or phone numbers from the leads you generate. You don't want these behemoths of social media to change their algorithm and completely disconnect you from your audience. That list of emails or list of phone numbers is your insurance. It is your direct line to the audience that you've spent all your time and energy building. And I'm going to throw in a bonus. Social media truth number five, you need to have a clear and attainable end goal. What would you like to give this audience? What value are you going to bring to this audience? And what exactly would you like in exchange? Perhaps you're giving them a lot of quality information, but you'd like them to buy a physical product like jewelry, your digital product like an online course, or a service like braiding pubic hair. These are all the things that you have to factor in when you are building that audience. And I want you to think long term too because you have the potential to build a lasting relationship with this audience. Don't start spamming them once they join your mailing list. Every single email you send to them should be well thought out. Now let me expound a bit on why you need a landing page and why you need to collect email addresses when there are so many fabulous social media platforms. Because over the last decade, thousands of businesses have seen their revenues vanish because Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter had a change in algorithm or policy. I won't even get into censorship. I don't care how much time, money, and TLC you put into your empire. If it sits on rented land, it ain't yours. You do not have the final say and you could be evicted at the press of a button. That is why you need a direct connection with your audience. Let me phrase it like this. What's the point of putting all your time and energy into building a following on a platform that will eventually insist that you pay to reach the same audience that you spent hundreds, maybe thousands of hours building? Will you 
you got to wonder how we allowed the behemoth of social media to convince us that this was okay to begin with. And on the page of keeping it 1000 with folks, yes, email has become a hell of a lot more sophisticated, but I can't stand sending them and I can't stand receiving them. I dislike it so much I created my own app called The Pep, which allows me to notify my followers on any platform of important posts through the app. It's like a modern day pager. If I post something important to Facebook and you follow me on Facebook, The Pep allows me to notify everyone who follows me on Facebook of that post. There's no algorithm to deal with. There's no data mining. There's no censorship. It allows me to communicate directly with my audiences without having to send out emails. I can see some of y'all are like, well, how the hell are you going to notify me if you ain't got my email address? It's really simple. You follow me on the app and it sends you a notification through the app whenever I post something important to the platform that you follow me on. So if you follow me on YouTube and I post something important to YouTube, all my YouTube followers are going to get a notification through the app when I post that important post. What's also dope is if you want me to have your email address, you can then volunteer to say, give this dude my email address. We have that type of rapport. I want to be on his mailing list. But you don't have to volunteer your email address when you follow me on the PEP. If you are interested in helping me test this product that I created, I will give you six months for free. You don't have to be a business owner. You could just be someone who follows me on the PEP. But in exchange for them six free months, I want constructive feedback and lots of it. I need constructive criticism. I need you to tell me about the bugs. I need you to tell me about what you like and what you don't like. If this is at all interesting to you, please go to PEPRequest.com get on the beta list and let's do the damn thing. Let's stop approaching social media from a poverty mindset. Speaking of poverty, my next video is about 12 cognitive biases that will keep you poor. If you are interested in seeing that video, please follow me at petrequest.com. My name is Romney Malco and this concludes another episode of Advice from a Jackass.